Welcome everybody. This is the first series in the GQ audio tutorial set. Focus today is on FMOD and Unity integration. Uh, GQ audio is the name I'm giving this series. GQ stands for Game Quarry, which is the name that we're giving the game design program at Indiana University in Bloomington. The uh, program itself is just getting started. We're planning for classes to begin in the fall of 2015. If you check out games.indiana.edu, you can see all we have right now is an FAQ page, some basic questions we hope are answered there, and there will be more information there soon once we flesh out all the details of the program and get some more information up there for everybody to see what this program is all about. This first tutorial will really just help set the ground for what's possible with Unity and FMOD integration. We'll talk about some of the tools that you need, software that you might need to download, and some really basic operations with FMOD to get things up and running and ready to go so that your sounds can be integrated into a Unity game that you've been working on. So The first thing that you'll need to do, of course, is to design your sound behaviors in FMOD. Before we dive into the specifics, I should point you to some other resources. Uh, the Sound Librarian project is something that Stefan Schutz has put together in recent months. And what he has to offer is currently really the best FMOD training you're going to find. He has a number of courses, as you can see here. He knows his stuff inside and out. They're done really, really well. And this is a great place to go to learn more about FMOD. If you're not looking for a class, you just want a community to help you out. Stefan also put together the Sound Librarian Forum. This doesn't require any sort of fee. You just need to create an account here and you can be part of the conversation concerning FMOD, uh, working with the software, integrating it into various games that you're working on. It's a great community and everybody really helpful and it will go a long way towards helping you with the projects that you might be working on. But Let's talk about getting things set up for these tutorials that will come later in the series. So just to begin, I want to show you some basic things for creating behaviors in FMOD. Uh, I'm going to start by importing an audio file. I'll grab one of these click sounds that we use later on. You can see it shows up here in the audio bin. Over here in the Events tab of FMOD, I'm going to go ahead and create a new event. I'm going to give it the name Click, since that's what this sound is. Uh, one thing I want to point out before we go any further with this is by default when you create something in FMOD, when you create an event in FMOD, the master track automatically gives you the 3D panner. Uh, and of course, the 3D panner is really useful for any kind of sound that you might want to use where you want to position it in a 3D space. But ultimately, that sort of behavior eats up a lot of memory and is costly to the CPU, potentially takes away resources from other parts of your game. So if you know you're not going to be using positional sound, it's a good idea to just delete that panner. You can highlight it and hit delete. It goes away. 3D panner is removed from the track. Um, in some cases, you may find that you open up FMOD and this area which they call the deck, isn't there. Um, if you press the D key on your keyboard, you can toggle the deck on and off. So if FMOD looks like this when you launch it and you don't see the 3D panner in this lower central area of the screen, just hit the D key, it will show up, and you can delete the 3D panner. Click on it, hit delete, and it's gone, and your project will be more efficient overall. Once you've done that, the, the uh, event is ready to go. I'm going to drop the sound that I imported here into the timeline. Once I've done that, I can close the bin. I can use this tool right here to zoom in. I'll go ahead and put that right at the beginning. Click play. We can hear the event. Uh, one thing that might be a little confusing is by default, FMOD is going to loop this sound. Um, but you can see down here, the loop button is toggled off, which means that it will not actually loop when it plays back in the game. 
Um, so even though the playback is looped up here, this button right here is the one that determines how it's going to play back in the game. I'm going to leave that off for now. Of course, there's a number of other things that you might want to do to create your events, but like I said, we're just going to leave this one here for now so we can go through the rest of the setup. Really important thing you have to do is to make sure that all of your events are assigned to the master bank. If you right click on event, you can choose this option, assign to bank, and then go to master bank. It's assigned to the master bank. It will be bundled and exported from Unity, I'm sorry, from FMOD with, uh, as part of the master bank. You can confirm that by going to the banks tab, opening up master bank, and you can see the click event is right there. That has to be done. Otherwise, your sounds won't be exported in the correct way and ultimately won't be available within Unity when you're trying to integrate them in your game. Next thing you need to do before we can take the last few steps is to save the project. I'm going to give this a name. Doesn't really matter what it is right now. Drop it in the folder that I have for this project. And it's saved. And now that it's saved, I can do the last two steps that you need to go through in order to bundle things in FMOD and have them ready for integration with Unity. First thing to do is under the File menu, you want to choose Build. It's not really clear what happens when you build, but um, with larger projects, the build process takes longer. My sense is that FMOD just goes through, looks at all the behaviors, looks at the events, looks at the banks, packages everything so that it will be in the right format for integration with game engines later on. Follow up to that step is also under the file menu, you want to export the GUIDs, uh, G-U-I-D-S. I'm going to call those GUIDs. I don't know if that's actually what they're called, but this is a text file. It has a bunch of pointers to the events that you create in FMOD. You get this message that confirms that you've done it successfully. It also gives you a file path that lets you know where it is. And this is helpful because we'll need to go back to this build directory later on when we work in Unity in order to collect or connect everything that we've done in FMOD with a Unity game. We click OK, and that's done, ready to go. It's important to note that those last two steps we just went through, building the project and exporting the GUIDs, is something that you need to do every time you make a change in FMOD. Data that's associated with your events or additional sound files that you bring into your project or tie to an event has to be bundled in that way before it can be part of your Unity game. So in the development process, you'll find yourself building and exporting GUIDs frequently while you're working on your projects. So things are more or less ready to go with FMOD. Um, let's talk a little bit about Unity. Of course, to do anything with Unity, you have to have the software first. Um, at this point in time, Unity 4.5.3 is the current version, though I suspect that's going to change fairly soon. Uh, Unity, of course, is a free download. Anybody can get Unity, run it in Windows, run it in Macintosh. But in order to get Unity and FMOD to work together, you need to have the pro version of Unity. FMOD integration won't work with the free Unity version. You have to have pro. In addition to that, you also need to have the Unity integration package. Now, this is FMOD's download page, and here about halfway down, you can see FMOD Studio Unity integration download link is right here, and that gives you everything you need in order to connect Unity and FMOD together download that, install it, it will add an FMOD component to your Unity menu and that will allow you to tie everything together within your Unity projects. Last thing I'll show you just as a kickoff to the tutorials that will follow is the Rollaball lesson which is here at the Unity website it's one of their tutorial projects. It's a really, really basic project um, where you act as if you're tilting 
a plane that has a ball on it. You're trying to pick up a bunch of square objects that are hovering over the surface. Really simple game, basic gameplay, but it's a great tutorial and it teaches you some important things about Unity. And it's also a really good example to use for building some basic sound cues. So in the coming lessons, we'll cue single one-shot sound effects, we'll cue random sound effects, uh, we'll cue sound effects based on parameters coming from the game, and we'll also look at doing some really basic music cues.